I'm sorry? Yeah. You probably know, if, if uh, Kenny, that what he was whispering is that BC, BC before the game sent their starters out to half court to, um, to address our players and, and applaud them uh, for the type of season they had and the type of people they are. And I thought that is an incredible gesture. It, it doesn't surprise me coming from Boston College, but we, we so appreciate it. Uh, I thought it was a very professional performance tonight to get a win. I think after a certain period of time, we were emotionally drained. I mean, I, I know for that, I was tearing up in a national anthem. Uh, so it was um, you know, very emotionally draining for all of us, but we got through it, got a, got a win, and now we move on. Uh, it's probably very good that we don't have a lot of time in between games so we can continue to play basketball. Coach, if you could, the thought process to have Damian throw up that honorary tip, if you will, was that you or what was behind that? It was me, but to be honest with you, I thought of, I thought of it in five seconds. Kenny was co trying to come up with ideas to do to honor him. Um, and the, f the first 23 I didn't like, so I just came up with that <laughs> spontaneously. <laughs> How do you think Trey played, given the circumstances? He was the one I was most worried about with the emotion. Um, but I thought he did a very good job. He got to the line. He was nine for nine from the foul line, and I thought all. I, th I think for the first seven eight minutes, the guys just played un incredible defense. The atmosphere you're, you called for the fans yesterday. Just talk about what you felt. You know, it's the only thing we have is is the fans right now. It's it's the only thing we can hang our hat on for these guys and uh, the fans. I, I knew they would do it. Uh, they've been great pe great fans from first day I, w I walked into this place. Coach, you guys have an opportunity sitting in second place right now in the ACC uh, to go out and win the conference. Is that now the focus for the team? It is. I don't know if they would acknowledge it. Uh, they would? Yeah. At Kentucky, we did it my second year, and they didn't acknowledge it. So hopefully they would. So we'll, we'll, we'll give it our best shot. Not going to be easy playing um, at Duke, at Virginia, at Notre Dame, and at Pittsburgh, but we're going to give it our best shot. There are at least two online petitions urging that the decision be reversed on the postseason ban. Would you encourage that? Let me let me say this. The system is broken. Okay. Please, nobody blame uh, Dr. Ramsey. Tom Jurich made this decision, not Dr. Ramsey. Dr. Ramsey had to okay it. If Dr. Ramsey didn't want to okay it, he could could have vetoed it. But Tom made the decision. Tom is the best athletic director in all of athletics. Now, the mistake was not made with Tom making a decision. We all got to live by that because we all love the man, we respect the man. The mistake was made by not having Tom Jurich on the committee. You don't go into war without your general. And they made a mistake in not having him on his committee. Rather than pinpoint who's to blame, we don't want to do that. It's a mistake. Now, some, some committees don't have the AD, but in this case, you needed the AD. So, if Tom Jurich would have known of what the meeting's going on, this would have happened a month and a half ago. Because he said, if we have a problem, if we have violated rules, we will own up to it, and we will address it immediately. He said that. And he addressed it the first time he knew it. It's not worse than you think, and it's not going to be. He would have addressed it if he, right away six weeks ago. So everybody says, oh, it must be much worse. No, it was the first time he knew of the violations and he addressed it immediately. It doesn't matter whether I agree or disagree to it. You know, my feeling is with the NCAA, I think it's wrong to penalize these kids in this regard. I think when, back in the old days, when, when players gambled and they took them down and, and it was a scam, they took them out. They took them out and they made them ineligible for life. They deserve to be. They gambled. But in this case, when you're not directly involved, it's my belief, it should be automatic, that you'll find $10 million and that the coaches get fined 50% of their salaries, even though they didn't know about it. It doesn't matter. They should be fined 50% of their salaries because they were leading. That's what happens on Wall Street. If J.P. Morgan does something wrong. Jamie Dimon didn't know about it, but that person, you're going to pay an $800 million fine. And, and that's what I believe should happen. If... The play. Now, if our players were involved in this, they should be out of the tournament and should not be allowed to play. 
That's my opinion, but that's not the way it works. All this investigating, it should be immediately, you should kill the university's pocketbook and, and right away and take that money and put it in a scholarship for, for needy kids to go to college, athletes and, and, and so on. And, and that's what, this is wrong. It's a, it's a bad system. That doesn't mean we were not wrong in what we've done. In the limited knowledge, I know we were wrong. It should have never gone on. It's, it's, it, it turns my stomach. Um, and I don't know, I, I've said it a hundred times, I want to keep beating this, but I don't know why they did it. It doesn't make any sense to me. It makes no sense. And everybody who was involved hurt a lot of good people, uh, a lot of fans. And it should never go, it, you know, it, that should have never gone on. It did. And innocent people now will pay the price. So to answer you, we're going to support Tom in his decision. And we're going to support Dr. Ramsey for okaying his decision. Um, I never go against Tom because if he came to me and tried to said, uh, Coach, what do you think maybe you should come out of the matchup zone? I'd, I'd tell him where to go. <laughs> but in this regard, he, he's, he's the general. He's the brightest guy in the room. So we all respect, and oh, as, as tough as it is, I mean, I'm sick over it. I, I can't tell you how sick I am. I had, my resistance is so low right now. I had Ralph Willard, who's got just a minor cold, not sit next to me. Uh, and, and, I, and I'm emotionally very distraught over this. But I believe in the man. I believe he knows what's right. I believe he knows uh, much more than all of us combined in terms of what's the right thing to do. It's, it's the NCAA system that's wrong. It's wrong. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's right now, it shouldn't be, this thing shouldn't be, we should be penalized, no question about it. But not this team it shouldn't be penalized. And, uh, but the NCAA didn't make that decision, we made that decision. So we got to stick with it and, um, and just move forward in a positive way. But we've got a great leader and we've got to follow that leader. Has he shared any of the specifics with you? I'm not allowed to know anything because, and the reason being is just that I don't understand any of this. I'm still, I'm st still have to be interviewed. Uh, the, uh, I come out and say, you know, I, I didn't know anything. I, I said this yesterday. There's not one coach in America, not one junior college coach, not one that would ever tolerate this behavior. There's not any, forget me, not anybody. Nobody would tolerate No parent, well, I shouldn't say that. Nobody, no coach in this country would tolerate that behavior. Um, <coughs> And it must be, there must be a price to pay for that behavior, certainly. But this team shouldn't pay that price, unfortunately. And I believe the NCAA needs to change. It's not going to change with us. You know, that unbelievable speech that Jimmy Valvano made that night was, it's not going to save my life, but it's going to, uh, I hope that it's going to save other lives. Well, in this case, it's not going to save the University of Louisville. But something should change when the pe people are not involved uh, they should not pay the penalty, and I believe we should get hit with a heavy, heavy financial fine that that puts us where we got to go out and fundraise to make up for it, and um, and do anything possible. And that's I believe that's what should be done. We should be hit with a ten, fifteen million dollar fine, and that's it, uh, unless somebody was involved. And I think that's what the NCAA should do down the road. It's not it's not going to do it now, but they should start thinking about that in in hurting. Where you really hurt a university is their, is their wallet. Where you really hurt a coach is his wallet. Rick, do you feel that your fans who are willing to spend money on NCAA tournament tickets deserve some sort of information or explanation as to why this internal ban happened? We violated rules. We violated rules. I mean, a lady wrote, wrote a whole book. What was her motive? Her motive was to hurt us and make money. It wasn't to clean up the system. Come on. So, um, you know, it's, we got hurt. She mission accomplished for her, the publisher, and the writer. We got hurt. They weren't trying to clean up the ills of college basketball, believe me. Any other questions about the game? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Coach, will Damien be good to go for Monday night against Duke? I don't know. I don't know. We're, we're going to make sure he's 100% uh, with this. Um, and, I, and I'll end this uh, speech by saying this. Look. You know, sometimes I get on a soap, soapbox and I say how much integrity this program has and how it really is true. It really is true. It's, it's tough to fathom. It's tough to fathom what went on. Because you know how people say, he had to know, he had to know. And 
I get very upset at, at that, but I did the same thing to everybody around me. And I started getting paranoid. You had to know. What, how, how could you not know? I didn't know. I, I was over that dorm 100. I did not know. You had to know security. You had to know. No, I didn't. They, if they did it, they snuck. So it is, unfortunately, uh, that type of situation. Uh, I became paranoid when it happened. So I don't get upset when I hear people say, well, he had to know. Because I did the same thing myself with the people surrounding me. And uh, grabbing managers and say, you had to see something. Why didn't you come to me? Well, I had a kid, Logan, Logan Bauman, who is the most honorable man in the world. And you had to know something. You live, I never know. I grabbed my nephews. And you had to know. You lived there. Uncle Rick, I didn't know a single thing. I never saw a single thing. So with that, I'll, I'll leave you with that thought. And um, it's unexplainable, undeniable sometimes. But uh, my faith is in Tom Jurich. He, he is a great AD. Did he hurt us? More than you could ever imagine. Are the fans suffering along with the players? More than ever, but we got to trust our leader. He, he's, he leads us into good times. He leads us into bad times. we got to trust our leader. And, and as much as um, Dr. Ramsey's taking a lot of heat right now, please don't, don't give him the heat. The man doesn't. He's taking enough heat from enough places. He doesn't need this heat because he's done a lot of great things for our university. A lot of tremendous things for our university. Just getting off that highway and driving down that street and seeing the way that campus looks right now and all the things he's done for our university. Please, he, he doesn't deserve this. Thank you.